Oh no, they won't get me! Oh, hi. I'm Mark. I've been a professional artist for 10 years and now I teach art for a living. In this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'll show you six, no, seven art cheats that feel completely illegal just because of how good they are. Pros use them all the time and it'll blow your mind. Hopefully. Uh, help! Quickly, let's get this class started! There are seven cheats that I want to cover today and I guarantee you there's something in there that you've never seen before, if not all of it. So pay attention, class is in session. Now, I say these cheats are illegal, but obviously they aren't. You should use them if you like them. They're just too powerful and with great power comes great response. Anyways, let's get right into it. After you've paid a class fee of either one like or one sub, mm-hmm, that's better. The first cheat that we'll look at today is specific to Photoshop. Most others will apply to most painting software, but this one is just too good to not mention, even if it's not available to everyone. You might have heard before of the mixer brush. Essentially, just a typical Photoshop brush, but instead of sampling a flat color like we usually do, we can sample an image. What? First, we have to make sure that we have the mixer brush selected here and select a dry load. By the way, highly recommend that you try the others too. Um, to test them out. Now, if I color pick, or in this case, I should say image pick this area, when I paint, I'll be painting with this entire image, which can give some pretty trippy results. Now, let's do this again, but with a green gradient to sample from. I have this custom brush here, which in regular mode already looks pretty good, very convenient for painting grass quickly. But if I switch back to mixer brush mode and sample this thing here, look at what I get when I paint using the same grass brush. <gasps> magic. I get a subtle gradient from top to bottom, where the bottom is a little darker maybe to simulate a bit of shadow between the blades of grass. How cool is that? Imagine all the other possibilities. <sighs> now, the next cheat is one I tell my students all the time. Use references, but not just that. Use references for shading and lighting. Don't wing it. You can only learn it through observation, not imagination. But wait, what if you can't find a good reference? Do you just start crying in a corner and give up on art? No, there are some different variants on this tool, but one that works for everyone and that I recommend to students usually is called Magic Poser Web. I have nothing to gain from this, by the way. It's not sponsored or anything. It's just a good tool. So when you can't find the right reference, you can use this to move the character or characters in here to match the pose in your drawing and adjust the light to your liking. Boom! Now you not only have a great reference for what the light looks like on the surfaces of those bodies, but you also get a good reference for the shading. And if you want to try a different light setup, well, you can just change the light direction. Easy. Maybe even add a cast shadow on these characters by spawning a piece of geometry in there and positioning it to block some of the lights to create a dramatic effect. This is an amazing reference for your studies. Another amazing thing for your art studies is a structure. Maybe the structure of a complete art education program like Art School for Digital Artists. It's objectively the most popular online program you can find going on nearly 11,000 students from all around the world. An art program you can tackle from home at your own pace, regardless if you have experience with art or not. Link down below. Make sure you use the coupon in the video description to get a big discount on the total price. That discount will be valid until the end of the month, so you still have some time left. Don't miss out. The next cheat has to do with the liquify tool. I'm sure most of you know what that tool is, but I want to mention one specific feature in here to adjust your character's face when they look derpy, or even just to try different variants quickly without having to repaint anything. Now, I believe this is only available in Photoshop, but anyways, it can actually detect a face on the canvas. So it usually has to be shaded a bit. Works great for photos, for example. Now, this is a bit of an interesting tool too, since it might not detect a face if it can't recognize one. Kind of a low key way of Photoshop telling you that you suck, or maybe the Adobe programmers suck. Whichever way to think about it makes you feel better. But anyways, with this tool, you can make some really nice subtle or not so subtle adjustments to the face of your characters. Maybe making the eyes bigger, closer together, forcing a smile. It lets you adjust all the facial features, kind of like a character creator at the start of an RPG game. 
very handy. The next cheat is going to be super quick. It's a perspective brush. All you need is a horizon line first, and then using my custom perspective brush, I can quickly pop one, two, three vanishing points to guide my perspective drawings. This way, you'll always make sure the perspective is correct and you won't ever need to draw individual vanishing lines anymore. If you like to draw a lot of environments or even characters in perspective using bounding boxes, this one is a must have. Now, talking about custom brushes, let me show you another type of custom brush that can save you a lot of time. Pattern brushes with high spacing. Let me explain. Let's say you need to draw a fence or some electric poles or a chain or maybe some scales on a lizard, you could manually paint all of the details individually if you prefer to waste your life or create a custom brush based on these. Really quickly here, I drew some simple ones that I can turn into brush presets. What I want to make sure I do in my brush settings then is set the spacing so that each stamp is pasted right next to one another, rather than overlapping to create a smooth stroke like most brushes do. Now with a single brush stroke, I can get a quick fence or you know whatever else you can imagine that repeats in a pattern like that. Some electric lines, like I said, a chain, so many possibilities. I have this scale brush too, for example. This one just needs to have the direction of the pattern set to the pen direction too, and now I can quickly fill this with scales instead of drawing them one by one and hoping I'll be done before I die of old age. Custom brushes can be a massive time saver when used well. The sixth cheat is meant as a follow-up to last week's class where I talked about shading with a soft brush as being the best shading brush to use for beginners. Here's one more thing you can do with it to make it even better of a tool. Pair it with the selection tool. Let's say you're shading something like this and you're trying to get a nice sharp transition from this detail to that detail. Sure, you could scale down the brush size and paint it in, but a smarter way to go about it would be to just select the area that you want to paint and then use the soft brush to get a smooth gradient. You might already do this, but I think this one's important to mention just in case you don't. Pairing the selection tool with a brush, any brush actually, is a much better way to paint if you're looking to get clean results instead of muddy results. And then finally, for the last cheat, we'll use layer styles. Let's say I'm trying to draw a bunch of flowers in a field, but the result is looking a bit flat. Needs some shadows, right? The long way would be to add the shadow below each of these flowers, but instead we can easily get shadows for all of them at once with this layer style here, drop shadow. Just gotta adjust the color, the distance and the sharpness to your liking. And now this adds a lot more depth really quickly. Another use for these layer styles could be in the case where you're painting snow or like fluffy clouds and you want to get some quick shading on there without having to manually paint it. Check this out. In addition to, or instead of the drop shadow, we can add a bit of inner shadow as well to make it feel more 3D-like. I can also layer these over multiple layers to get some nice depth in there. Even when I erase it, it looks great. This is pretty fun. And that's gonna be it for this week's class. I hope some of these cheats were new to you and that they'll help you in the future. If they do, help me out by sharing this class with at least 500 of your best friends and uh, uh, threaten them to subscribe. Do it now. And by the way, if you're too lazy to create your own custom brushes, check out mine linked in the video description. I have two packs of custom brushes there. The only two packs that I use, one of which is completely free. Give them a go. Now then, make sure you have the bell button enabled to be on time for next week's class or else Oh no, they won't get me!